I'm gonna introduce you to a match cut, the transition cousin of the jump cut. Let's go. Remember all the way back in Photoshop when we were building out Artboard 2 and I joked that we would have to figure it out in the animation phase? Well, that time is here. So that's what we're focusing on today. There are a couple of things that will help us. First, we're changing colors. So that will help reinforce the impact when the ball lands from the tip off. Second, we're also using contrast of size to help us open up and begin the phone screen transition. Our challenge here is that we need the timing and pacing to line up with Artboard 1, while also realizing that this is essentially a new sequence that's gonna start the transition from Artboard 2 into Artboard 3 that's eventually gonna land on our stats reveal. So the first thing I'm gonna do is make sure my Artboard 2 is on top of Artboard 1. And I'm also gonna have to adjust the timing here a little bit. So we cut the last one, Artboard 1 off at two seconds, but it stops a little bit before that. So as this slams down, I think we can hit left bracket here to have our board two start. And we can talk through what we're doing with this one here. So if I hit zero, boom. All right, so as this ball comes down, let's hop in here. This center circle is gonna open up and reveal the phone that is gonna have the player's name inside that is gonna take us in through our transition to the third and into the stats, right? So in Artboard 2, I'm gonna turn off that. Our background and our court lines are in good shape. So we're gonna play with the center line and the center circle. Well, let's start with the center circle first. I'm gonna go ahead and hit Commander Control and click on this arrow to twirl everything open like we've done. And I need to start a path because remember we're gonna be animating this from the circle to open up. So I'm setting my last keyframe first because the first points of the path are actually gonna overlap. So let's take this and if you hold Alt or Option and Shift and then hit the right arrow key, it's gonna push it out 10 frames. So now we can go in and make sure that these are over on top of each other. So I'm gonna hit my apostrophe key to make sure that I am gonna line these up right in the middle and actually see my, my path is a little bit off. So let's go to this last keyframe and make sure they're both selected. Shift click to make sure they're both selected and hold shift and hit the left arrow key to make sure we're right smack dab in the middle. And now we are. So we can go back to zero frames and shift click on one of these. And then if you click on it again and hold shift, we can take it down to the middle to make sure this is right in the middle, zoom in, use my scroll wheel. And same thing for this one, hold shift, take it in. And I wanna make sure these end up right on top of each other, which is why I set this keyframe first up here. I think I actually wanna push this a little bit further than where it is. So if I click on this one, hold shift, I can push it out just a little bit more than where I currently have it. All right. So the other thing I wanna do is going from board one to board two is I want this ball to really have an impact on art board two. So when the ball comes and smacks down, I want, I want the contrast here not only are we changing the color, but I want the center circle to start about the same size as the ball so that it, it really drives home that this was, a, this was a big hit from coming way up high. And when it comes down and hits, it's gonna explode out and reveal the phone. So the way that we're gonna do that is by going back into Artboard 2. And we're gonna push these out a couple frames. One, two, maybe just two frames. And I wanna go to my scale. So if I hit S, I can set my scale here. And if I hit U, I have all of my properties. If I Option or Alt and hold Shift, I can push that out 10 frames. And we're just gonna start pretty small. I need to turn off my center line so I can just see how small this is. That might be about right. And we want it to shoot out. 
right on. So let's just line these two up too and take our path to end about the same. All right, so now we need to put a, a curve on all of these. So if I highlight all of them, hit F9. Let's start with the scale. And I want this just to briefly start slow and I want it to really shoot out. So I'm gonna pull this top handle all the way over and let's just stick with the same three here. So it'll start a little slow, but then shoot right out. And then one thing you're gonna notice when I go into this path, if I click on the graph, this graph looks a little bit different than the other graph that we've been using. So we've been using on the scale, we've been using the value graph. Anything that is a path or a mask is going to be what's called the speed graph. No matter if you're on the value graph, or not, this is going to default to the speed graph. And some similar properties here, if we click on this last keyframe and hold, or if we click, click on this last line and hold shift and drag it back, we're basically looking at how tall this is for the height of the curve is the speed. So I'm gonna pull this one back just a touch. And that's going to shoot out and kind of settle in here as we get there. You can see it's moving a little bit slower. I'm just looking at this line right here. And it's going to move pretty fast in the beginning because of the height of the curve. And it's going to kind of settle into place. All right. And I actually want my scale to, let's take it two more. One, two. All right, let's play with the center line here because we also want it to shrink down in the beginning and open up as, the, as that one opens up. So if I hold Command or Control, open that up, then I have my size here. So we can go ahead and unlink this size. And this is the end state. So I'm gonna hold Alt or Option and Shift and hit my right arrow key to push that out 10 frames. And I'm gonna start with it much thinner. Let's call it maybe Five. All right, let's highlight those, F9. And we wanted to follow a similar path. I can go back into my value graph for this one. Make sure my size is selected. And this one was out three frames, remember? And the top one, I'm holding shift, dragging it all the way back to the beginning. And again, red is X, Y is green. So if I hit my minus key to zoom out, getting some nice action here. So I want the phone screen to pop on in a little bit of a trailing motion. So I'm gonna create some repetition here with this phone screen, especially as we get into the transitions here in the third board. But initially, I want this to shoot out very similarly. So let's go ahead and hold Command or Control and click on the arrow so we get everything here. Hit the size, and this is the end state. So again, I'm just at the, the very end here. I'm gonna bring it back one just so I, I'm at 10 frames, and I'm gonna take it back to the beginning. And I want this to be, let's just call it something very, very tiny, 25. And let's highlight those and hit F9, go into our graph, Hope you're following along with all this repetition because reusing the same curves will allow you to make things feel very similar and cohesive. So if I hit U, I said I wanted to push this out a couple frames. So I'm on PC again, so I hold Alt and I hit page down. If you're on a Mac, I believe it's function, option, and the down arrow key. One, two, three. So this is gonna be a little follow the leader. So this is gonna come out and my phone screen is gonna follow suit. So let me hit you on here. I actually might do my one, two, three. I might make my last frame the three frames.
And then I want my player name to follow. And that has an alpha mat we created. So since I already built this out, I'm just gonna command D to duplicate it and put this over the top. I can delete this phone screen. And in order for you to see the player name Phil, we just need to turn off the eyeball because it's an alpha mat. And then what I'm gonna do with this alpha mat is push it three frames. So it follows. So we get a little bit of following action here. And let's go ahead and pull the name Phil out here as well. And you can see that the name stays large the whole time. And I want to change that. So if I hit S, let's go back to the beginning here and go 10 frames. I'm doing control shift and right arrow. Yours is, if you're on Mac, is function shift and down. That'll get you 10 frames out with the CTI, which is the current time indicator here. And if you hit scale, uh, keyframe, we can go back to the beginning by holding shift and it's gonna snap here. And let's take this down to say 20. Let's go down by 50%. So this is just gonna reinforce the, the movement and be a, a really great secondary action to reinforce what we're doing. And we of course need to highlight them, F9, get in the graph and do the same song and dance we've been doing with the rest of these so that they all match. Let's see what that looks like. That feels pretty good. And we're going to go ahead and copy the, or duplicate this phone screen again and bring it up to the top. And I'm going to push it one, two, three to line up with the alpha, which is what the name Phil is, is working off of. And then I'm going to push it another three, one, two, three, because it's going to be the next part of the screen, which is going to be the transition into artboard three. And we can see that the next one that comes up is this dark blue background. So let's go ahead and search for color. And we need to change this color highlight controller pull it up in the effects controls and pick whip this color to be the dark blue. And I'm doing this just so I can start to see what this looks like, making sure I have the same consistency here in following the same rules that I've applied and that'll help us get into artboard three. So let's go back to the main comp here and see where we stand. I'm just gonna hit in here to shorten this so we don't have to watch it all the way through. And this is gonna jump, turn that down, take this down. If we, if we have this selected and we hit Alt and right bracket, it is gonna essentially cut the layer at that frame. And if I select, Artboard three, and I go forward one frame, and I hit the left bracket, it's gonna move the whole layer to line up at the CTI. So let's do that, and I can move that one forward too. We, we'll keep playing with this timing as we go. It's probably gonna change it again. So you can see when we're coming back down here, starting small and exploding up, and I can even say I decide I want to cut this by one or two frames. I can do that just to play with the timing and see what looks looks good. But you can see how we're trying to use the transition between one board to the next and using changes to help accentuate the movement. All right, we're in good shape. Let's go ahead and figure out how we're going to steal from Artboard 2 and repurpose for Artboard 3.